Alright, so today we're going to get started with a new lesson. It's section 25. Today is the 23rd. And section 8.5 is called the rational root theorem. Now, so far up to this point, in order to find the x intercepts, we have a toolkit. First thing we try to do is if it's basic, we just solve for it. Meaning if the problem is x plus 1 equals 0, you could bring the 1 over. Uh, the most important thing in math is factoring. So we know how to factor using the GCF. We could also do grouping. We could use trinomials and special cases. something that doesn't factor. We talked about using completing the square, and we talked about using the quadratic formula. Now the problem is these only work if you have x to the second or a quadratic. So what if you have something where it's like x to the third and it doesn't factor? and you clearly can't use completing the square or the quadratic formula. Well, in that case, we're going to have to use what's called the rational root theorem. Some people call this the rational zero theorem. If you just find how you can call it the rational root theorem, uh, and I also shorten it RRT. So let me show you how this works. When we're doing the rational root theorem, just go over it with an example. Say if we had an example, f of x is equal to x to the third minus 3x minus 2. Well, the rational root theorem, we're going to for the first step, we figure out how many positive roots could there be. And at this point, everyone should be able to do that. We have a positive x to the third, negative, negative, so there's definitely one positive root. So the number of negative roots, we change the signs of the odd powers of x. So instead of saying x to the third, we make it negative x to the third. Instead of saying minus 3x, we treat it as positive 3x. And negative 2 is really negative 2x to the 0. It's an even power, we leave it the same. So it looks like this changes twice. So we say 2 or 0. And by the way, we don't have to subtract 2 if we're looking for the imaginary roots. That only applies for positive and negative roots. So this third step is going to be four total, and you're going to need a calculator. So if you don't already have one out, you might want to take it out. This third step is where we list the possible roots. And the possible roots, we write them as P over Q. P represents factors, plus or minus. constant term. Constant term means the term without any x's. So p would represent factors of negative 2. Factors of negative 2, numbers that go into negative 2, would be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Q represents plus or minus factors of the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient, you guys know, is the number in front of the highest power of x. One. So as far as what could the roots be, 
what could be roots or zeros or x-intercepts of f of x, we have to write all these combinations. I'm going to write 1 over 1 and 2 over 1. So those are numbers that could be roots. The third step, or I'm sorry, the fourth step is we have to find the roots. The way that we find the roots is we take the possible roots and we see which ones, if you divide into the polynomial, give us a remainder of zero. There's two ways we can do this. So for example, let's see if 1, positive 1, is a root. We know there's supposed to be 1 positive. Let's see if positive 1 is a root. One way that we could do it is by using synthetic division. And we're really just looking to see, is the remainder 0? Remember we talked about this, that if the remainder is equal to 0, that gives you a factor, or it tells you that x is equal to the root. So if we try 1, if x is equal to 1, in the box we're going to put 1, 1x one to the third, and then x squared, and then x, and then the number. Well, there's no x squared, minus 3x, and then minus 2. Bring down the 1, 1 times 1 is 1. And we get a remainder of negative 4. What that means is that 1 is not one of the roots. We tried, but it's not one of the roots. So we could have done synthetic division on 1. Now we would do synthetic division on 2 and see if that works. Something else that you could do, it's a little bit faster, is called the remainder theorem. And I think you guys would prefer the remainder theorem. Because what that means is, to see if x is equal to 1, if that's a root, what we do is we plug it in and see if we get 0 when we plug it in for all the x's. So we have f of x is equal to x to the third minus 3x minus 2. Let's plug in 1 for all the x's. That's going to give us the remainder. that we get the same exact answer we got um, using synthetic division. Bottom line is positive is not a root. We have to keep going until we find something that works, meaning the remainder is zero. So now let's see if two is a root. It's a little bit shorter to use the remainder theorem. Generally, the process that we do is we see if it works using the remainder theorem, and then we get the depressed polynomial. Using synthetic. And I know this is new for you, so for the next couple of days, we're going to be doing this. So watch. Using the remainder theorem, I'm going to plug in 2 for all the x's. And actually, the fastest way to do this is in your calculator. If you type in 2 and store it for a, or store it for x, then what I'm going to do, 2, hit the store button, I'm going to store it for a, and on my calculator I'm going to type in a to the third minus 3a minus 2. My calculator is telling me the remainder is equal to zero, or this answer is equal to zero, which means that two is one of the three roots. So if two is one of the roots, the way that we get the remaining ones is we use synthetic division. I'm going to divide two into um, x to the third, x squared, x and the number. 1, 0, negative 3, and negative 2. 
we could have done this first, but generally we find one of the roots using the remainder theorem, and then we plug it into synthetic division to find the remaining roots. That's the fastest way. You could just do synthetic division if you want, uh, but that's usually the way that we do it, is we use the remainder theorem until we get something that works, meaning the remainder is zero, and then we use synthetic division. Two times one is two. This is four, one, and two. So we get a remainder of zero, which we were expecting. But this gives us a depressed polynomial, meaning it's one degree lower than what we started with. One x to the second plus two x plus one equals zero. And the way that we get the remaining roots is we find the two from this. This factors. So we actually get the other two roots are both negative one. So we found all three roots of the polynomial. Let's take a look at another problem. Maybe we'll do two more. What if we had a problem? f of x is equal to x to the third minus 3x squared minus 10x plus 24. And one thing I can do too before I forget, look at what we have. We have one positive root and we technically have two negative roots. Even though they're the same number, we know that there's a multiplicity. Well, what did we say we were going to get? One positive root and two or zero negative. So you can see why we're learning that. It, it just helped us check our work. So we got one positive like we were supposed to get, and we got two negative like we were supposed to get. It's possible we could have gotten zero negative and maybe the other two roots were imaginary. Let's finish this problem. First step is we find the number of positive roots. We would have positive, negative, negative, positive, which is 2 or 0. The number of negative roots. We're going to have negative, negative, positive, positive. I change the sign of the odd powers of x, and there's definitely one negative. As far as what the p over q values could be, p represents factors of 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, uh, 12, and 24. q represents factors of 1. We'll look to see what happens if the leading coefficient isn't 1 tomorrow. So if we're going to write all these combinations, all of these numbers over 1, it's just going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Now let's see which ones actually work. So we're going to be finding the roots. What I'm going to do in my calculator is I'm going to store each of these values until I find one of them that works. So what I'm going to do in my calculator is I'm going to type in um, a to the third minus 3a to the second minus 10a plus 24 and I'm going to store 1 in for a. I'm going to store 2 in for a. I'm going to store 3 in for a. And I'm going to look to see which ones give me a remainder of 0. I just need 1, and then I'll be able to find the other ones. So let's see here. I'm going to store 1 in for a, and I'm going to type in a to the third minus 3a to the second minus 10a plus 24. My calculator is telling me the remainder here would be 12. And that's not okay. I want to get a remainder of 0. So I'm going to store 2. My calculator is telling me the remainder is 0, which means x equals 2 is one of the three roots. So now let's find the other ones. I'm going to take 2 and I'm going to synthetically divide it into 1, negative 3, 
with negative 10 and 24. That's negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so this is negative 12. This would be negative 24, remainder of 0. So we're going to take this depressed polynomial, it's 1 degree lower than what we started with. It looks like I could just factor this. Looks like I got two positive, which is what we're looking for, and one negative. Alright, so let's finish with one more. Uh, how about if we had a longer one? Like, let's take something where it's uh, f of x is equal to x to the fourth minus 3x to the third. 53x squared minus 9x. Now we don't automatically go to the rational root theorem. If you take a look at my list, when you're baking banana bread or brownies, you don't always start at step 5. You start at step 1, then you go to step 2. So first thing I'm going to do is, it's not simple, but I could definitely factor out an x. set these factors equal to zero, we get one factor is zero, and we have x to the third minus 3x squared minus 53x minus 9. Now, that doesn't factor, and it's not quadratic, so we need to use our rational root theorem. The number of positive roots will go positive, negative, 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 so there's one positive root. The number of negative roots Change the signs of the odd powers of x. Looks like 2 or 0. The third step is we're going to list the possible roots, meaning factors of p. Factors of negative 9 would be 1, 3, and 9 over factors of q. Our last step is we have to figure out which ones actually work. So we're just going to write find them. So I'm going to type into my calculator a to the third minus 3 a to the second minus 53a minus 9. And I'm going to store 1 for a. I'm going to store 3 for a. I'm going to store 9 for a. And I'm going to see if any of these give us a remainder of 0. And if I store 1, I'm getting a remainder of negative 64. So obviously that's no good. If I store 3, I'm getting a remainder of negative 168. So that's no good. If I store 9, I'm getting a remainder of 0. That means that x is equal to 9 is one of the roots. And in order to find the other roots, we have to synthetically divide 9 into 1x to the third minus 3x squared minus 53x minus 9. doesn't look like that factors. It's not a big deal, so we just use quadratic formula or completing the square. Uh, I'm going to com complete the square. Usually that gives us a simplified answer right away, but you could do it however you want. 
So I'll just get some separation, factor out the leading coefficient, take half of negative 6, which is negative 3, and then square it, multiply it by the leading coefficient of 9, so we get negative 9. This would be x minus 3 squared minus 8 is equal to 0. Bring the 8 over, take the square root, Three plus or minus two root two as our answer. Now we were supposed to get uh, what were we supposed to get? One positive and two negative. Here's the one positive root. Um, now as far as negative two or zero negative, um, if we were to figure this out. 3 plus 2 root 2, this would be x is equal to 5.8. And if we were to do 3 minus 2 root 2, we get x is equal to 0 0.2. So technically, we got no negative roots. And as far as the number of positive roots, you could see there's one rational root. Remember, this is the rational root theorem, so it tells you how many rational roots you're going to get. You got one rational root positive um, and no negative. Total, we have uh, four roots. This counts for two plus one, and then plus the one will give us four total roots. So for homework, this is what I would like you to try. And I know this is new, uh, so just try your best. I am going to be checking it. Send me a picture tonight. This is what I would like you to do. On page 513, I would like you to please try numbers 16, 18, 22, 23, 24, 30, and 37. And I want you to try this using all four steps that I did. How many positive roots? How many negative roots? Find the p over q's. And then use synthetic division and the remainder theorem to find the roots. Thank you so much. Have a good day.